Hi, I'm Stacy, and today we are savoring fall. I just love fall. I mean, sweater weather, right? New TV shows because it's a new TV season. And how about awesome comfort food while sitting on the couch? But it's also a busy time. Lots of sports going on during the week, school. How about game day on the weekends? So one of the comfort foods that I think is just absolutely a must have are sloppy joes. But I've got a twist. How about a not so sloppy joe? Because growing up, my mom would do sloppy joes with that good old can of manwich. Yeah, you remember the manwich. Um, but I also remember eating it and it just falling all over my lap and falling all over the plate and needing a spoon. And I thought, there's got to be a better way to do sloppy joes. This is called not so sloppy joes. So we're going to cook that up really easily for you. And we're going to begin by prepping our veg. Everybody loves to do a sloppy joe a little bit differently. Some do peppers, some don't. I think with fall, we want to do some fall colored peppers. So I'm going to take um, one red, one orange, one yellow, and I'm going to take about a half of that pepper and cut up each into a nice fine dice. So remember, when you're going to cook, you should always have kind of a scrap bowl setting aside so you're not always walking to the trash can. That's a good idea. Thank you. Oh, I never thought of that. See? Well, you learn something new every day, Justin. Justin's still in his 20s, so, and I don't think you Oh, not that. anymore. What? You turned the 3-0? Two days ago. Old oh, man, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Okay, well now you've got to get your culinary skills tweaked in the decade of the third of your 30s. So we're just gonna do a nice small dice on this, Justin. And I like peppers. I don't do green peppers as much. I think the red, the orange, and the yellow, not just so much a beautiful color with fall, but just the flavors seem to, to be a little bit better. But honestly, like whatever you wanna do, if you wanna do green peppers, you can. If you wanna admit the peppers, no problem. It's life skills though, come on. <laughs> I, I, I brought out the big guns for you, for you guys. Actually, I'm a horrible cutter when it comes to um, doing anything but I appreciate the love. All right, so that's, let's do the orange. orange. What is your strategy with cutting that pepper there? Because I, I normally just cut the top off, but I feel like I waste so much of it when I do that. Um, everybody has a different way of, of saying how to cut a pepper and get the most out of it. Honestly, sometimes I'm thinking about too many other things that I just, I look at a spot that looks good and I go for it. But. If you really want to learn, Justin, because now that you're 30, okay, um, take your pepper here, like this red one, and just, there's your, there's your core, just cut down the sides. And you might get a little seed, but the vein pretty much will stay in the center. So then that's what you're throwing away. And here, you have a little bit left over in there, but it preserves, I think, as much of the pepper as possible. Does that make sense? All right, so our pepper's done. Now we're gonna go with onion because we're making garlic and onion as part of this sauce because everything begins with garlic and onion. Uh, yellow onion, sweet onion, Vidalia, Walla Walla is great. If you don't, red onion's fine, shallots are fine. Uh, about a half, I don't like it too overpowered with onion flavor. And I'm not gonna cut this up like I did the pepper because I don't wanna cry, it's not a good look. So I rely on my uh, nice little pull and chop. If you've ever seen this, it's like the most genius a uh, little nicer dicer out there on the market. I think they're on Amazon or somewhere you can get them. So just pop in, again, half an onion, and we're gonna get this to a really, really nice, fine consistency. And we're gonna get a little arm workout at the same time. All right, I mean, look at this result. I mean, is that not beautiful? And there's no tears. It's like baby shampoo for cooking. Awesome, all right, so that we're gonna go ahead, put in with our peppers, and now we're gonna start um, browning our meat. All right, so for my sloppy joes, 
I like to use a mix of meat. Usually it's just pure ground beef, but I like to kick things up. I do one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. So two pounds of ground something is what this recipe calls for. The reason why I like to do a blend, the pork gives it um, a nice kind of um, juicier, fattier texture. And the beef, I use a 90-10, so it doesn't get overly greasy. So over a medium-high skillet, we're just gonna get this to start browning. And then we're gonna add our veg, some garlic, and of course, build the sauce. Okay, after your meat is all browned, you wanna make sure to definitely drain it of all the fat. So once you get that out, you're gonna add the meat back into the pan. And this is where you can go ahead and take the diced onion and the red pepper and orange and yellow or green if you want to. And you're gonna just let this saute, again, another couple of minutes so the onion can start to soften and so can the peppers. And then really we get to build the sauce. I use minimal spices um, because I don't want this to be like a chili. Um, but still you want it to have more flavor than maybe what you find in a lot of the canned versions out there on the market. So you, you don't need to add butter when you're cooking onion. Like I always thought add butter when you're cooking onion. That's not necessarily Well, everything's better with butter. But because you're working with um, ground meat here, there's so much like fat and flavor that you don't need the butter at all. You're gonna get a great sauce, you're gonna get lots of flavor. Butter's just all about kind of building body into your food, so you don't need it. There's like natural butter in the meat, if you know what I mean. Okay, now that the peppers and onions have softened, we need to add that garlic I was talking about earlier. Um, you can chop your garlic. I kind of like to grate this, Rachel Ray. I watched this on one of her food shows and I think it's brilliant. It helps the garlic melt into the food better. Um, so you never get that person taking a bite and having that bigger piece of garlic that you were unable to chop. So about three cloves. If you love garlic, feel free to use more. This is a nice happy medium. Okay, so we're gonna just let the garlic cook for about a minute so it gets fragrant and now we get to really build the spice in the sauce. So what you're gonna do is take a can of diced tomatoes, a petite dice I think has a nice um, bite effect for this recipe. You're gonna add in about a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar, but you can use red wine vinegar, that's fine too. Worcestershire sauce, still don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Uh, three tablespoons of light or dark brown sugar, cumin. I love cumin in this. I'm doing a full teaspoon because we have the ground pork. Pork and cumin is like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, smoked paprika, again, about a teaspoon of that. Um, you can use regular paprika if you can't find smoked. It is a sweeter smoked, not that full on hot smoked that you see out of there on the market. Um, just again, because I'm not trying to turn this into a chili or make it very spicy. And then two tablespoons of yellow mustard. Uh, you could use dry mustard too if you want to. It'll turn out just as beautifully. But you add all that in here and you give it a stir. And we're gonna let all of this flavor with the spices and the juice from the tomatoes blend together as well. We want a little bit of tomato paste to thicken it up. About a tablespoon or two is all we need. And I do this like grandmother style. I really don't measure. It's all about eyeing it. So help thicken up that sauce. Is that tomato paste? tomato paste. In a tube? In a tube. You didn't know it existed? I always go with the can. It is the most brilliant thing. I know, you never use the whole can, right? No, you it's never. Always wasted. It's always wasted. Tubes where it's at, baby. So basically, you can add a little bit of salt and pepper, of course, to taste. Sometimes when you're working with um, spices, you don't need to, but we just do it for good measure. And then we're going to let this simmer for about 25 minutes before we turn it into a casserole. Smells so good. Okay, we've done this about 25 minutes, so we're gonna turn the heat off and now we're gonna build the casserole. This is the not so sloppy part. So yes, you can enjoy Sloppy Joe's while wearing white. So we are going to add cheese and a lot of cheese. I love New York sharp cheddar for this or a Monterey Jack 
sharp cheddar mix, um, and Cabo is like the best cheese. Um, shredded, pre-shredded is fine. We're gonna do a light layer over top of the meat itself and then we're gonna put on our slider buns. So here's what you do. Get the little slider rolls at the grocery store and you're gonna just kind of tear them apart um, because everything is better with butter. We're going to butter them. So I melted a little butter in a bowl. I'm gonna take my pastry brush and I'm going to butter the tops and we're gonna put the rolls cut side up, all right? And we'll build that all around. Usually it takes about four or five sliders. It depends how much you're making. This recipe, as I've kind of did it for this res uh, for this video, we'll feed about six people, six to eight, depending on how hungry your crew is. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just place them around. You can have some space in between your buns. Maybe fit two more. We're gonna have a square to spare. I only need one half here, okay. As far as which slider buns, I think egg rolls are amazing. The Hawaiian rolls are great. Or in this case, brioche. Something soft and sweet um, plays off of the um, spices and the beef really well. Okay, so we just kind of arranged those uh, to cover the top. And now, as I promised, more cheese. We're gonna use this entire bowl of cheese over top. And then what we're gonna do is we preheated the oven at 350 degrees. So we're gonna pop that in, make this the cheesy casserole comfort food dish that you want when the weather starts turning chilly or even in the dead of winter when it's super cold and you just need that edible hug on the inside. Yeah, that's what this is gonna cook up to in the oven. And we'll pop it in there for about 20, 25 minutes. We want the buns to get golden brown, we want the cheese to get brown and melty and um, oh, it's just gonna be divine. So while the casserole is baking and the cheese is melting, it's the perfect time to make a side dish. Now, I have to be fully honest, I normally just serve a not so sloppy joe with some potato chips or frozen tater tots that I pop in the oven. But what would a cooking show be if you don't actually make a side dish? And because I love french fries, we're gonna make some homemade french fries. I'm not doing no deep fryer though. Mm -mm, way too messy for me. Remember, this is all about not being sloppy. So we're gonna cook these babies up in an air fryer. So all you wanna do is grab a rusted potato. Think serving wise, one potato per person for fries. And you're gonna clean it and scrub it. And then you're just going to start cutting them into strips, about a quarter inch thick. Again, no fancy nice skills here needed. Just be really careful when you do that. Um, I don't peel my french fries because I love that rustic um, kind of bite and I love the added flavor that the skin can give. So, and you just kind of go through these and make them into nice bite size fries, okay? And the beauty of this is because they're homemade, they don't need to be even and perfect, right? Because we're not perfect in our kitchens at all. No judgment in our No food. judgment, see that's what I love. And what we're gonna do is pop these into an air fryer. All air fryers are different, okay? So you really need to know your air fryer. Usually it's a temperature of about 380, 385 degrees. Some of those domed or egg-shaped air fryers um, are really quick. So these could cook up in about 15 minutes to a nice crispness. Um, I have a countertop oven with an air fryer function. So mine are gonna take a little bit longer. So we're gonna probably air fry these for about 18 to 20 minutes. Also because my husband only likes crispy fries. So when we go out to eat and go to Wig Night, our favorite sports bar, he pulls the one Harry Met Sally thing and he has his very specific fry order. Me, I can eat a fry anyway. I can eat a soggy limb fry. I can eat a burnt fry. I could eat waffle fries. Crinkle cut though are the best fries, okay? Oh, what? Shoestring all the way. What? You might as well go for a fried crispy onion ring, like real, like those thin onion strings. You can't get any potato in a shoestring fry, right? Okay, we're just, Justin's gonna learn, okay, as will you in this show. We're gonna school him, okay? These young fellas, I gotta tell you, what's up with them? I tell you, you know? these young bucks. Right, this age brings experience, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, 
So I got these down to about where I want them. This one's a little too thick. Okay. And it sounds like the air fryer has preheated and we're ready to go. Okay, so now that we got these cut up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover them in a little bit of oil. You want an oil that can take a high heat. So avocado oil, um, a light olive oil, a canola oil is fine. And let me grab that. A couple of tablespoons. Again, we're not gonna drench them. Uh, we just want the salt and pepper to stick to our fries. Good kosher salt. So just a couple of pinchfuls of kosher salt and some pepper. You could, if you really wanted to, add a little paprika to this, but I like to keep fries kind of simple. Mix it up. Get everything coated. And then we want to take our air fryer tray, or if you're using, again, one of those dome-shaped air fryers, you just want to make sure that you lay these out in a single layer, okay? That way they're going to crisp the best. Make sure not to crowd the pan too much because if you crowd a pan with anything, if this was a vegetable, it causes steam and it makes things soggy and soft, so. Oh, oh my gosh, okay. Well, there you go. Don't crowd your pans anymore. So you may have to work in batches, just warning you, if you're feeding a crowd, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. All right, again, popping them into our air fryer. For me, it's gonna take about 18, 20 minutes to get them nice and crispy. Come off, there we go. <laughs> All right, the fries turned out amazing. Nice brown and crispy, but not greasy because we didn't do it in deep uh, oil. All right, so everything's tur turning out and timing out greatly. Fries are done. Let me go grab, I don't know why I threw this away, the casserole. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. Ooh, mama. Cheesy goodness. Okay, now what I like to do is add a little color and just a little extra on top. So I chopped up some parsley and some uh, scallions. You could do both. You could do just one of those. But I like to give that a sprinkle on top because of course this should be Instagram worthy, right? Beautiful. And that's it. That's a not so sloppy Joe with some homemade French fries for chilly nights, for fall days, winter, any time of year, really. All right. But I want to prove to you it's not just not sloppy in the name. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. Get some little extra beef to throw on top. And the kids love this. It's so easy for the little ones to eat too because they don't have the sloppy joe falling out all over onto the table. All right, am I allowed to dive in? Am I allowed to taste my own food? Taste it, dive in. Say go for it, okay. A little bit more cheese. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, so good. All right, that just came out hot, so give me a second here. So, so great. Comfort food in fall. Truly, again, an edible hug. Thanks for watching. For more of these great recipes, please follow me here on Binge, on YouTube, of course on my website, savoritwithstacy.com, and on Instagram. Till next time.